are here living the authentic life with dear friend Ashley Seipel. Welcome today. Thank you for having me. We uh, met years ago um, in Houston. Um, I don't even remember the exact location, but we were we did some charity things together, Heroes in Handbags. Yes. I know we were both involved with, but the influencer world was certainly away, and you have blown it out of the water. You have consistently been there and present and um, have over 200,000 followers. Bravo you. It's crazy. I'm like, I just remember when I first started my Instagram and it was nothing at the time. And it's like, you know, just windows have been open, doors have been opened. And it's, it's a very interesting industry, as you know, to be in. It's, there's so much ebb and flow. And um, I looked at your feed last night and you had posted something an hour prior and you had over 3,200 people that engaged with your comment. Yes. I mean, that's, or saw it. And that's my Sex in the City ringtone. <laughs> and that's my spam calling me. How do we make spam stop? <laughs> See, we're living authentically, guys. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but that's amazing. And I noticed you don't post every day. Is that I, a new thing or has that been consistent? I think throughout that's your actually been consistent. I'm consistently inconsistent. I feel like posting every day for me just isn't something I'm able to do. I uh -huh. have content, but I think what I have a challenge with sometimes is I have photos. It's coming up with the verbiage and everything to write that's something like, and I feel I was looking at your feed last night. Uh -huh. Everything you say in your commentary is so engaging. And sometimes I feel like, okay, I have the things. I just don't know what exactly to say because you want people to be engaged with what you're saying so that then they comment and interact with you. And so I feel like it's kind of been maybe my downfall a little bit is I'm not as consistent with posting as I should be, but I post on stories and mm -hmm. shamelessly post photos of my son all the time. Oh my God. On stories. Absolutely darling. Thank what you. an angel. Yes. And of course, Easter is such a happy time to get photographs of right. that blonde hair. Yes, he's such a, a sweetie. Cutie pie. And then I noticed that you do have your husband in them on occasion. Very, very, <laughs> very rarely. He is not on social media. He is my number one supporter, but he still is kind of like, what is this? I don't get it, but I support you. And he can see too, you know, the connections that I have made and things that have been advantageous to us as a family, you know, like partnering with the four C season several times, you know, mm -hmm. so he definitely enjoys that aspect of it, but he is so far off social media. It is not even funny. He is like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what TikTok is. I don't know any of it. He's like, I'm on Twitter and I follow like oil and gas honchos. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But I think that, um, being married 18 years, I think that's one of the greatest gifts of love in a relationship is not getting what your partner's doing, but know it's important to them and supporting exactly. it nonetheless. Yes, exactly. Like my mom still will ask me, what exactly does he do, your husband? <laughs> and I'm like, well, he does financial advising and oil and gas. And she's like, you really should know after being together for 10 years, what exactly <laughs> he does. And I was like, well, he does something that I don't understand, like finances. Is, is yes. not my thing. Oil and gas is not my thing, even though that's the city we're in. Exactly. I'm just like, you know, I listen to what he says. I've learned some things, but it is not, it is not my cup of tea. <laughs> well, it took Rob, it took COVID to get Rob engaged and on board with doing social media with me. And now, now he, he thrives, loves it. Yes, he, on Wednesdays, I, I, know, I love it. Wacky Watch Wednesday, and he's absolutely hilarious. So um, it's it's been an interesting journey. So tell me about balancing motherhood and work, because I find, we were texting about that, it's the hardest thing because obviously we want our kids to come first. Right. But we know that to be a great mom, that it helps to be a working mom and to have some, 
let's talk about balance because I feel like no matter how successful right. or the age of every woman I talk to, it's a balancing act. It really is. And I think it's like, I remember when I first had Wyatt, everybody was like, do not feel bad delegating. If someone offers to help, let them help. And we mm -hmm. have someone that comes once a week, which isn't that often, but mm -hmm. that helps me focus on work that day he goes mm -hmm. to school two days a week, which I still find interesting that they call it school. Yes. But he has his nine little other friends that he plays with. And that helps me a lot where I kind of micromanage what I need to do mm -hmm. into the days that I Mm -hmm. have help, but it definitely is hard because I feel like, especially when kiddos are sick or anything, my job definitely falls to the wayside because I want to be there and present mm -hmm. for him. So yes, it definitely is a balancing act that if somebody has the prescription for it, I would love it because I am still navigating it and still trying to figure out how to be the best I can be. But I also recognize that quality over quantity is important. And I feel like I've constantly tried to be maybe more quantity versus quality. And that's something that I'm working on that, you know, he can solo play while I'm doing something else. I don't constantly have to be crawling on the floor, playing Legos and engaging with him. I can be doing my work while he's doing something as well. And I think that's hard. We have an only child. And so, um, I think they're more accustomed to having all of our attention. And then when they can't have it, but I, I think it's it's been great. Bella's certainly um, such a hard worker. And I think part of it is she sees us like constantly, mm -hmm. but I think they also know that they're the priority. Right. When the proverbial um, uh, moment comes up and there has to be a choice, we're always gonna choose yes. them. And I think, so you, um, speaking of sick kids, we also have talked a lot about um, what you've gone through in your health journey, because mm -hmm. um, it's such a big part of your life. You right. were featured on the cover of, is it arthritis today? Arthritis today. I mean, a cover girl, yes. not necessarily the way you were thinking of being exactly, a cover girl. Exactly, but I will take it. I still have the poster up in my house. I will take it, it was after Terry Bradshaw was on the cover. So, I mean, if girl, I can be, and then I think, in the footsteps. who else was? Phil Mickelson. So I'm like, if girl. I can be on the cover after them. <laughs> I love it. What a win. <laughs> well, um, you, were diagnosed with arthritis when you were eight mm -hmm. and then suffered with it for a number of years, we were saying until you were 12. Yes. And then it went into remission. Right. And then later in life, it came back or was not dormant anymore. So Correct. tell us a little bit about being a child in that journey. You know, I feel like children are so resilient that looking mm -hmm. back, I cared so much less than I feel like I did and was impacted less than I was as an adult. You know, as a kid, I feel like you're kind of like, oh, okay, you know, fine, I'll be fine. You know, where when then I was re-diagnosed as an adult, I was like, whoa, okay, this is now going to be my life, and this changes things. So, when I um, suffered from it as a child, we were living in Vail at the mm -hmm. time, was, which is where I was born and raised. And the dramatic change for me was I had the pain was in my hands, so I had to switch from skiing to snowboarding because I couldn't hold the poles. Wow. Which is like such a veil story. You know, it you don't is. think about something but if like that. That's like something, I mean, for those of you who don't <laughs> ski or board, it's a big it's deal. It's a big deal. Like, it's like the way that it's, like Friday Night Lights here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it was part of your journey. You skied yeah. with your friends. It was part of the culture. It was right. part of socializing. It was part of family being right. together. And then to ha not be able to do that, it had to feel literally crippling. Right. It, like, luckily at the time, snowboarding was becoming popular. Yes. But yes, it wasn't exactly the way I expected to go about it. At the same time, too, I had to learn how to write with my left hand because I had a lot of pain in my right hand. I'm not ambidextrous or anything. I can't claim that. But there was definitely trials and tribulations that I went through at the time that now looking back, I feel so much like remorse for myself. But at the time, it was like, oh, it's fine. 
and I wasn't able to, there wasn't at the school I was at, uh -huh. which is a very small private school, they didn't offer a lot of sports. The only girls sport was volleyball and uh -huh. I wasn't able to play that because of where the pain was. But when I was slowly getting into remission, I then was finally able to play it. And my rheumatologist at the time was in Denver because there was nobody in Vail. And he drove up to see my first volleyball game. And so oh. that kind of was like a nice little full circle moment. I think anybody who regularly sees doctors starts to form a relationship with them. And I don't Absolutely. think I recognized how, even now saying it out loud, I haven't thought about that in a long time, how nice that was of him to care so that much about much. a patient. Because it's not just a ride. You could. Right. You don't mountain. just make yeah. it a GIF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, did you, was there medication then? Was it about rehab? How are things different now? So there was medication then. I was on some sort of NSAID. I don't remember. Uh -huh. All my mom will say is that like they were like horse massive pills that I had to uh -huh. take and I just was resilient. She constantly reminds me of that, which is really nice of her to do. She said, you never complain because we would have to go down to Denver for all the appointments, but we'd make a day of it. Um, and you know, the changing with the skiing and then and the writing and everything else. But yeah, the, uh, I think things just have progressed so, so much, much in the, the line of medication. I'm of course no doctor, but everything that I can see, it's just, I hate there's to so say there's, there's a pill for everything, but it just seems that everything's becoming better and stronger mm -hmm. and maybe less invasive, mm -hmm. which I hate to say it because I currently, the regimen I'm on is I'm on a shot that I take twice a month. But when I say a shot, it sounds a lot more severe than it is. I mean, it's a quick prick. So when I say less invasive, I suppose it's not, but I think just where you continue seeing anything in the medical field go is, is very impressive. And I know too, from now my relationship with my current rheumatologist that just everything is making such strong headway. And you've been very active with the arthritis foundation mm -hmm. and you were honored at the bone bash. Yes. Yes. So I became involved in San Francisco, which is where I was diagnosed, okay. re-diagnosed in 2013. And luckily I had already had the relationship with them and because I got involved because they did a fashion show there. So pre-re-diagnosis, I was involved with them. And so I was lucky at the time that I had the relationship with them because they got me into the best rheumatologist that was not taking wow. any patients. That was a god -way. And yeah, they he knew exactly what I had. And he said, wow. but for insurance purposes, we have to try NSAIDs first, yes. this, 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 before doing a biologic. And then I was on their board there. I don't know if it was quite called their board, their mm -hmm. advisory council. Mm -hmm. and then moved here and it was a way for me to make friends and connections so joined here and then I was honored at the bone bash um, as the adult honoree and then I chaired one year and I co-chaired another year and then I'm on their board as well and I was the youngest person nationally to be asked to be on the board so on their specific board but yeah because it's quite an honor people don't associate arthritis with a person who looks like you with a any beautiful young person, fashionable yeah. young you. person they you think of it as your grandma right that's hunched over exactly and, um in pain and you look like you're okay and i think that's also what's i think is that a curse or a blessing right i do i, I think that's thing, the right? hardest thing because it's you know somebody has a broken leg somebody has you know another ailment you can physically see it yeah well, with arthritis you can and so you just assume okay everything's fine they look fine they must feel fine so I feel like I always had a hard time when I'd first tell people well, yes I suffer from arthritis they'd be like hmm? and I'd be like just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not I'm happening. not feeling it just because mm -hmm. I'm wearing high heels today and smiling doesn't mean I'm not not feeling great you know so, so can you still wear heels it's yes. more about your hands yes uh, it's more it's my hips so oh, your your, hips, what i have yeah it's right. primarily my hips and lower back which makes sitting for an extended period of time really hard standing for an extended period of time really hard which um, sounds like being a mother is really hard yes well being a mother is really hard as you know anyway <laughs> exactly being a mother's hard anyways but yes it's you know especially why it's a big boy he's uh -huh. 30 
five pounds almost. So carrying him up and down the stairs, cause you know, they want to be carried even if yes. they can walk and the carrying him, but you know, we, we get through it. And that's also been a, a hardship that I faced is I feel like I had accepted everything moving forward. Okay. This is my new normal. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, how things are going to be. And then had him and it was like, okay, wow, this is a little bit more emotional because I want to be able to do everything I can for him with mm -hmm. him. And I don't want to be mom that's having to take a break, mom that's laying in bed, mom that can't get out of bed for a day. So I feel like like any mom has anything going on. You know, you always are your own worst enemy to of you know, putting yourself down and thinking like, right. yeah, I'm not enough. Best. I'm not exactly in, where we have to find that balance of being enough. Mm -hmm. So is there, um, have you turned to your spirituality or are there inspirational readings? Like, do you get emails every day that give you positive thoughts that help you? Cause for Bella and her journey, she's been through, someone gave me this calendar and it's called the badass calendar. And oh. every day it tells you something, something about positive. like positive. And so I started started sending her things too. And at first she was like, mom, these are so annoying. Yeah. And then she'd like forward them to her friends. So, um, we kind of have this little thing where we, she shares that with her friends every day. And then I put scripture. So it is kind of funny that there's a scripture next to the badass oh, calendar. Yes. But, um, are there things that you've turned to or books that you've read or things that have helped you through the journey? Do you know, to say one consistent thing? No. I mean, I see a therapist. So uh -huh. I mean, that'll always helps, you know, talking Absolutely. to anybody about anything that you're going through. I mean, I feel like that's the best prescription for everybody is go talk to someone. And I'm very lucky that my spouse is incredibly supportive. He was there literally in San Francisco when I was unable to walk, unable to get down the stairs, unable to go around the block or do anything. So he's kind of been through my whole journey with me. And which it's, is helpful. It's incredibly helpful. And he's so understanding. And I say, I don't feel great. And he's racing to my rheumatologist in Sugarland to get an extra shot because I can't get one wow. with insurance, you know? So he's very much on, on page with me, on board with me. So I think that helps a lot. And then of course I follow, you know, any sort of, um, stuff on Instagram. You I know, know, like women on top. Women or, on top or like even like the mom, mom Instagram things are like, yes. you are enough. You know, you yeah. might not have the cleanest house. You might not have the this or the that, you know? So I think that kind of makes me when I'm kind of doubting myself as a mom, which mm -hmm. again, I'm sure I will continue to do for the rest of my life that I feel like that's kind of like, okay, things can be okay. I'm, I'm good enough today and I'm doing my best. I found it really interesting. I was oddly met this super cool girl, um, Erica in the taxi in San Tropez and she worked with the Forbes women's summit. So I got to oh, go to the wow. Forbes women's summit. I mean, is that a chance That's meeting? So cool. Um, shout out to Erica Burrow, <laughs> but, um, and Brooke Shields was talking and she was sharing like the Thursday she doesn't feel enough or she'll be in a meeting. And I think I, don't know, I think she went to Princeton or something Ivy. Like she's actually really, really smart, really smart, a book smart, and then has done well to be in Hollywood that long right. and be successful and to feel, and I find it interesting. Like when women get together, we can talk about how hard it is. Whereas men in an interview are never going to really like bear it all yes. and say, I'm, it's hard for me to make it through this. Yes. And I found that no matter how old we are or what we look like or what people's perception is, it's still hard. Yes. I feel like it is hard. And I feel like there is such a double standard between mom and dad and men and women yes. when they become like, or comes to parenting, like moms are expected to do it all where dads, I'm going to a friend's wedding at the uh, end of next month. And my uh -huh. husband's not able to go with me. Uh -huh. And people are like, are you think he'll be okay with Wyatt alone? And I'm like, yes, he is very capable, but I'm like, that's, you know, too, maybe positive or negative, true or untrue. You know, I feel like well, I what, can where we you. live, I'm like, he will yeah. be okay. Well, I will I be FaceTiming. Not be okay. <laughs> been okay with Bella. And I think they might kill each other if they spent the weekend together without me now. But anyway, we're not going to try that. So we'll never know. But, um, I think that's amazing. And I think, um, when I, um, I feel like people, 
uh, perceive, like they see us on social media, they see like, oh, you've got it all. And then there's still these challenges. And I remember there were moments um, that I would feel like, um, is Rob going to really marry me? He said he wanted to marry me, but is he going to propose? And then with you being sick and him seeing all that vulnerability, I'm Mm -hmm. sure that was hard, but then also like even more meaningful to get through all of that. Right. Definitely. And I think too, you know, you face too, I was 10, almost 10 years ago. So I would have been 26 at the time, almost 26 or 26 again, Uh finance math aren't my thing. Um, (laughs) Exactly. So 10 years ago, exactly. I remember thinking, okay, like uh, kids weren't really on my radar at the time, but saying to him, like, I don't know, you know, especially with the the pain is in my hips and low back. That's where you carry your baby weight. You know, that's where a lot of things shift and move and where a lot of the pressure is. And I remember saying to him, I don't know. You know, I remember talking to my OB at the time and my rheumatologist, I don't know what does, you know, what does the future hold? Is this going to be something where I'm capable of it, you know, or I'm able to do it. I'm able to carry because I have some friends that have arthritis that weren't able to, or were told, but again, they're a little bit older. And I think each person's case is uniquely there. So I can't speak generally on that, but Mm -hmm. I mean, luckily I was able to, I did. Okay. I was able to stay on my medication, which was a godsend. Yes, too. because and, that's a hard part where yes. you wonder if your medication's affecting the baby. Because I know I was on anxiety medication and there were a lot of people that were like, you should be on that. And I'm like, well, if I want to stay married and deal with all these hormones, I think it's a good idea for yes. me to stay on my anxiety. And I want to be my best self, <laughs> bringing right. my child into the world and being exactly. the best mom I can be. And that's how I'm going to do my yes. best. So it's pretty interesting. Well, I am. Um, I think it's amazing. You went to undergrad at CU Boulder, which mm-hmm. is another bond that we have yes. because Rob went to CU Boulder, but then you went back and got a degree in fashion. I did. My grand plan was always to do fashion. That's my passion. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. But my mom was like, no, you need to be more well-rounded. What if you decide you're not interested in this? What right. if you realize you're not cut out for it? So went to CU. Um, I'm a criminology major. So I got to choose something that else I was interested in, a very far spectrum from it each is. other. It is. And then went to... So you're going to focus on fashion suicide? Exactly, right? <laughs> Maybe make inmate, inmate clothing. Um, and Sorry, bad joke. That was a corny dad joke. <laughs> um, and then I went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in San Francisco. Incredible. So yes. what was it? Did you... Um, how was it moving that far away from home? Did you love it? Was it like, or was it hard to, like you'd been a Colorado girl? I had been Colorado, but San Francisco, I visited with my dad in uh-huh. 2000, uh-huh. I think, um, right before he passed actually. And so San Francisco was like my dream. Like I okay, just loved it Okay, not New there. York, not LA. No, you no. wanted to be in San Francisco. I wanted to be in San Francisco. Okay. And then coincidentally, my sister had moved there oh, a few years okay, prior to drop. that, ended up working. Someone- out really nice yeah Yeah, so it was kind of like another coming full circle moment where I felt kind of reconnected to my dad because we had had Mm -hmm. a great trip there and then my sister was there and then I was just kind of getting to follow my dream living in a city that at the time was amazing. I know things have changed a little bit now, but um, um, it was definitely, yes, it was incredible when I lived there. Amazing. So you started working with, um, how did you, like, were you, was your blog your side hustle or did you just one day decide to give it all up and start your blog. So when I was in San Francisco, my um, degree was in visual merchandising. Uh I originally done fashion design, but I could not sew for the life of me and like the sketching and everything just was not working out. So I was like, okay, what basically is um, Mm well-rounded fashion where I learned how to do buying. I learned drafting. I learned, you know, doing merchandising and everything. Uh So I ended up working for a local designer there Uh doing buying and event planning for her. And Mm -hmm. then on the side, my sister was in uh, the junior league at the time. Uh And so, you know, I would style her, I'd style myself. People would see kind of what I was wearing. Oh my gosh, that's from Forever 21, but you're, you know, you're carrying a Prada purse and, you know. Yes, high low. Right, exactly, Exactly. my favorite. And so they all would kind of say, can you help Mm -hmm. us? Can you do this? So it wasn't really even a side hustle at the time. It just was, I was, you know, helping out friends or, Mm -hmm. um, and so then from there, 
met my husband, now husband, and he was moving back to Houston and was kind of just like, oh, you know, like, let me come and show you. I'd never been here before, had no plan to ever move to Texas. Well, long story short, obviously I moved here, but I knew nobody at the time. And so among volunteering and getting involved with things like the Arthritis Foundation, I he said, why don't you just try and start your own styling company and so i did and i had a handful of clients and then on the side and how did you get your first client did you i honestly i don't even remember i think from a friend of a friend so i started meeting people mm -hmm. i literally would go to workout classes anything talk to the people at cvs to meet people yeah and my second cousin or my mom's second cousin at the time lived here and she was in oil and gas but a mm -hmm. very fashion savvy woman in oil and oh, gas interesting and she introduced me to someone that then introduced me i hadn't thought about this in a long time to one of their friends friends yeah or something who it's was the a, way it works. a stay-at-home mom but was incredibly involved in her child's school so had gala and everything else to go to. And so she was my first client. And then from there, it was just kind of word of mouth. And that was kind of at the time in 2014 when I felt like Instagram was kind of starting to take off. Yes, you were like that perfect So I wasn't like the spot. real like sweet spot, which I feel like was a little bit earlier. Yeah. But then I thought, well, well, you know, I'll start this blog and Instagram. And now kind of the blogs fall into the wayside. The styling has fallen to the wayside. Now I feel like Instagram is just kind of been my primary focus, especially since 2020. Yes, when life changed. Forever. But yes. Such an interesting thing. So, um, Tell us about your now involved with Wyatt School. Yes. What um, what charities have your heart now in addition to arthritis? So I focus a lot on Heroes for Children, which mm -hmm. is how I I don't know if that is how we met it. The original not original I think Heroes we met and Handbags, that. but I think yeah we did meet before then. So I'm very involved with them. I volunteer with them, and then of course the Handbags Committee I am on. And then last year I received the Decade of Dedication Award, which was incredibly meaningful to me because what those children go through and the families go through is breaks my heart. And they and give I'm, funds to families with children with cancer, cancer to help them. Yes, and specifically Texas families, which I think is really wonderful because of to course- To know the money staying here local. Right, St. Jude's, Make-A-Wish, all those are wonderful, but this is so focused on Texas and with things that I didn't necessarily think about, like fertility treatments for young women going through cancer, um, funeral costs, are what a lot of their yeah. funds go to stuff that you just gives me chills. You know, you don't think about to think about your child dying and not being able to give them a proper funeral. It doesn't even compute yeah. how hard that is. So I actually started with them the first year before Bella was even born. So I think it was 2006. And um, after that, when she was five, um, our friend's daughter was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wrote a children's book about helping her by planning a party for her. And um, so I am truly passionate about the work they do. And I'm really connected to also the research side of things, but then just like even paying for parking, that's a big deal. It's huge. Or, or one parent has to give up their job. And we were talking about taking care of kids and you're telling me how your mom drove you to Denver. And I right. think about, I've said this so many times, had um, Bella was going, had I had a real job where I had to check in from nine to five, I would have had to have taken a leave of absence right. to just take her to everything she needs to go to. Right. So it's, um, it makes such a difference to give back. And I love the fashion connection with it. I think a lot of people think um, fashion is frivolous, but we've talked about, um, in fact, I was just having this conversation with someone a couple days ago who was apologizing. She's like, well, I love fashion. And I said, um, I think it's a way that we express ourselves. I think it's a way we share our creativity. Exactly. It's almost like, 
a form of artwork. And it's and, a mood booster too. Like you don't feel yes. great. You put on something like today. I was like, well, I wasn't quite sure what to wear, but I was like, well, I want to wear something colorful and springy. And I instantly, I was like holding outfits up and I was like, okay, this is it. Cause it made me smile. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, it, everybody does kind of think, oh, you know, you're in passion or this, that. And it's like, no, it's a great mood booster and so many other things. And I think a it, form of self-expression. Yes. And I, it's a way for me to open conversation, which then leads to connection. Exactly. Do you remember the next big step when, when you just got more followers, when more people started connecting with you? I think I was at the point just where I shamelessly reached out to any company that I liked, you know, and I feel like I said to them, you know, do you want to work together? I like this. I'll promote it without, you know, payment at that time wasn't even an thought. option. Right. And I think just from that, it kept being, I think hashtags more at that time helped a lot too, where people were finding things via hashtag. And so I just think kind of the 2020 and motherhood aspect too, kind of helped me get on a, a, a larger trajectory of followers and, I'm not. The yes. I felt like you really grew when you were pregnant and yes. you were showing that journey. Yes. Cause people I think a were... lot of, and everybody was at home and we were so much, we were less connected to what we were doing. Cause so we, we were doing online that all the time. So we were online all the time. Yes. yes. So and we I... were ordering online cause you couldn't go to a store. Exactly. And you were and it ordering was like leisure. And so it was like, yeah, what can I get from things. Target? What can I get from Lululemon? What can I get that's attainable? Cause I'm not wearing high heels. I'm not using a purse. So too bad Stanley's didn't exist at that time. I think those would have been even crazier than they are now. Exactly. But I think it, I think that helped too, that people kind of maybe saw more of, I wouldn't say a softer side. Cause I think I was actually saying that to my husband before I came here, I said, I think this would be a really great way for people people to get a better sense of my personality yes. because I don't talk a lot on Instagram, on stories, on anything. And I feel like I come off much more like one dimensional mm -hmm. on Instagram than as funny and like interesting and as like boisterous as I think I am, right. you know, all of the good things, um, where I just, I think it's, it's so interesting kind of the life that Instagram has taken on or social media. I mean, I'm not on TikTok. Um, um, yeah, we haven't ventured. I'm, it's I'm, almost like a whole nother. Yeah. I'm like, I can't, category. I can only handle so much. <laughs> and I do want to go back to what you said in the beginning about, um, not posting every day. I went back maybe five years ago. I was working with a company that was in another city and I was trying to get just even up to 10,000, like that level. Yeah. And so they had some good ideas of images that drew people in. They were more like Pinterest images. But I found that what resonates the most with our followers and I get the most engagement in are things that are organic and they're what happening in my life. So I can't plan that far ahead. Exactly. Like I can know that tomorrow I'll be at the Bayou Bend luncheon, but depending upon what emotion I'm feeling, that's how it leads to what the post is about. Exactly. And I feel like I looked at a lot of people, local bloggers, as well as, you know, throughout the country that were getting such heavy engagement and their numbers were growing and mine weren't. And I was like, you know, it looks that they're standing in front of a garage and they got a hundred thousand likes. And here I am paying a professional to take, to take all picture. these photos. Oh, yeah. And yet the one Adam would take of me walking Wyatt, you know, and the baby buggy got more yes. engagement. And I, I believe that you hit it, the nail on the head that it really is the authentic side or maybe the more candid you know, people yes. can really tell if something is staged. And I definitely, I mean, I love editorial type photos. That's what I yes. kind of look at versus, okay, here I am with a get ready with me. Isn't kind of mm -hmm. my cup of tea, which is why I also don't do it. Um, but I think the mass amount of people do really like seeing, you know, genuinely who people are and having something feel a bit more authentic than That's staged. kind of reality TV, maybe. That's right, why yes. people want to know the bloopers. Like yeah. we, um, if Rob and I plan too much about what we're going to say on Wacky Watch Wednesday, it, 
goes off. I mean, it certainly goes off the rails. When, <laughs> no matter well, you guys what. are always laughing. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, what did you actually just say? <laughs> that rodeo comment still gets me. <laughs> or anyway, we were at Bun V, and everybody around us was, or you could just smell a lot of marijuana. And and then Rob's like, oh, the marijuana. I'm like, but we weren't smoking. Yeah, it, it wasn't us. It, it wasn't, wasn't us. I promise. Not that I'm <laughs> judging people that do it, but it wasn't me. I'm like, ah, my mother watches this. I don't know. It's just funny. It's, um, but I think that's what um, draws people in is like, well, we were um, at a car dealership the other day and this man came in. He's like, are you the Wacky Watch Wednesday guy? I think I bought oh a watch gosh, from you. I love it. And then, um, and so Rob then was like, yeah, it was like, yeah. Movie star. Yeah. I mean, he, I guess he's a movie star. He actually, I, we tell him all the time, right? Dinesh, we have to Yes, he is the, he's the reason your he's numbers go up. He, yes. he is absolutely the he's reason. He's the one bringing in the clients. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, so funny. Okay, so summer travel. Are you guys summering somewhere this summer? We I have the wedding in San Miguel de Allende, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then we'll be going to Vail for the month of July. Yay! It's the best place to be. Yes, we it's can't wait. A... We have a condo in Beaver Creek uh, that we rented last year, too. And we're really looking forward forward to it. Such a good place. I remember um, I was talking to this man who was an oil exec and he's like, I can't wait to use summer as a verb. He's like, what do you mean? He goes, I want to summer somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that is, yes, that's a great way to look at life. All right. So let's talk about what you're purchasing for your, or have you made purchases for spring, summer? Are you more like when you're out and about, you do it, or is it more what people see? send you because you're embracing the brands like how do you I'm, look at your spring summer wardrobe I'm very particular on what I accept now my mom will say because she lives here now uh -huh. um, she'll say well you don't get as many packages as you used to and I said because now I can be more selective I'm not Love it. Yeah. here to just say okay send this to me and then it gets given uh -huh. right to Goodwill or my cleaning lady or whoever, right, you know, right. whoever wants it. Um, but I haven't honestly purchased a lot yet. My focus has actually been purchasing things for the wedding because it's black oh, tie yeah. and I'm so excited. Um, and I just, I haven't got anything. So are yet. you collaborating with the designer for that look? I wish. No. I know, right? I wish. <laughs> Carolina Herrera, she's ex right? accepting right? dresses. Like anybody that wants Oscar to Oscar De yes, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. And so will your mom take care of Wyatt when you travel? Is that... Uh, so she'll be with me for the wedding. Okay. She was also a wedding guest invite. So poor Adam will be staying home with Wyatt. But he'll, oh, have, right. he'll have the sitter's help. Okay, good. So she'll be, she'll be helping him. Well, I love that. And do you plan ahead your outfits? Do you have like a staging area in your closet? I do, or yes. Do you know, like... I'm very much like I can't plan day of what I'm wearing. If I'm packing, it all gets laid out. There's uh -huh. the earrings, there's the necklace there's the purse but I do pride myself on being pre pre having a baby an excellent packer I went to Paris for two weeks in a carry-on wow. and I had a different outfit for every single day okay so let's talk about that <laughs> how do you do that so what I was going to Paris and I do not have a carry-on oh you got to get a good extendable <laughs> one um, now I have that but I'm yeah I well you probably have a beautiful Louis Vuitton one I am sure or something else that's marvelous mine's just like a Delcy hard shell one um I packing cubes uh -huh. your best oh. friend the ones that get them on Amazon that are like the plastic that you suction <laughs> That's so they're amazing. Smart. But then when you take it out, do you have to steam it? I don't normally travel with a lot of stuff that has to get steamed, which probably is also mind blowing. At the time I did collaborate when I was going to Paris with a brand called Jude Connolly uh -huh. and all of their materials, it's called Jude cloth is uh -huh. like this soft, not scuba, cause that's much yeah. thicker, uh -huh. but this soft material where nothing that's incredible. Wrinkled. And I wasn't doing things that required high heels. I mean, I was there, it was like my fourth time there, but I was there kind of still playing tourist. You know, I wasn't going, I was going to nice dinners, but nothing that required, you know, a different evening bag or high heels. I think that's why I was able to pack. I still had three pairs of shoes with me and two jackets and toiletries and jewelry and everything, but I had also oh, wow. a very big carry on. Well, I have already started packing for Paris, so I know what I'm bringing like to my 
May trip and to my summer trip to Nantucket. Like I'm yes. planning ahead because for me, it's about what I post on social media because we post every day exactly. and then how I can mix it up. And I have two bare tennis shoes and two flats and two mid heels and two high heels and six bags. And then I'm going shopping for bags. Yes. Yeah, so you need all the luggage. But I feel like I'm... The bad thing is Rob makes me carry all of my own luggage everywhere we go. <laughs> like oh, that is his oh my way gosh, of getting, of back, getting at back at me. You bring, it's, this you bring it, you have to carry oh, it. Oh yeah, I don't. I'm like, oh, this is heavy. And then I'm still the person on the airplane. I'm always like, okay, I'll wait till a man's behind me. That sounds, Do, I'm sure women are capable of doing everything. Yes, they can pull down my luggage. My carry on, the... oh, it's so heavy. And I stand there and I still remember I had one guy who was going to New York and he's like, oh, I'll get that for you. And then he was like, go like this and he's like I think my hernia just ruptured and I was just like oh my gosh like I felt terrible but I also was like well it looked I mean my bags have to be my when I do carry on I have to be 50 pounds like I stand there I mean and of course mind over matter if I need to do it I can do it but I'm not going to like that's what they're there for oh my god all right I gotta focus on this cube thing okay good I yes. will work on that the, and then how do you suck the air out it comes with like a little, little you know like what you blow balls yeah. up with yeah. it comes with one of those so yes you have to pack it and it's about this big but that's how we went to Florida for a month and then last year when we were in Colorado and Wyatt had a duffel I had a duffel and I'm talking like a body size duffel like it yes. was a substantial duffel but for a month yeah that it is. was it fit everything it just was very heavy and again my husband had to deal with it so I was like he's like I think these are 80 pounds and I'm like he's like what's in here I was like diapers take up a lot of room and it your is. son needs well, like a casual clothes an, an eagle now. yes casual clothes fancy clothes bubbles he needs all of the choices well that's the thing workout yes day night yes and in Colorado the hiking well um, I could talk to you forever about fashion. I'm looking forward to seeing what you select from the store and as your favorite pieces and um, collaborating to do a giveaway together. Yes. And, um, all things fun. Anything else you want to share? Just, I'm so happy we did this. It's, we've talked about it for a long time and I'm glad yes. we finally put pen to paper and sat here and got to chat. It has been really nice. So fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, have a good week. Bye.